Okay, <clears throat> so let's look at kidney disorders. So today we will finish acute and chronic kidney disease. So the official terms are acute kidney injury and then chronic kidney disease. In both conditions, there will be fluid and electrolyte problems. Because as you know, what are the major uh, functions of the kidneys? What do they do for us? Why do we have two of them instead of one? Okay, they will clean the blood. So there will, there will number one prob, uh, function is elimination, right? So it will eliminate waste, the UN creatinine, uh, all other things. So it will regulate how much drug is in your system. It will regulate how much electrolytes are in there, right? So it will be elimination, number one, of waste products. Number one, uh, number two is, con do they control how much fluids and electrolytes are in the body? Yes, so they will control uh, via osmosis again and filtration. So it will they will uh, look at, okay, there's too much drugs here. We'll eliminate this or too much potassium, too much sodium, we'll eliminate them, okay? Or too much blood volume, let's eliminate some of them, right? So that's number two. Number three is erythropoietin. Okay? It's a hormone that will help produ produce red blood cells, right? Okay, and then... Um, Number four is related to fluid balance. So since it regulates fluid volume or blood volume, therefore it will also regulate blood pressure, correct? Okay, there are other functions, but let's stick with those four, yes? Yeah, fluids and electrolytes. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, so therefore, what will be common problems when there is acute or chronic kidney problems. What will happen to the weight? Weight. What will happen to your weight? Whether you have, again, acute or chronic kidney problems, what will happen to the weight? The big gain. What will happen to your electrolyte levels? Increase, right? So potassium will be high, right? Uh, what will happen to your blood, um, red blood cells? decrease production of red blood cells. What will happen to blood pressure? High blood pressure, right? Okay. And we already discussed this, right? The equivalence, one kilogram is equal to one liter, one pound will be equal to 500 ml. And these are your, <clears throat> we have a table, which we'll look at later under interventions. Let's start with uh, chronic kidney disease first. When we say chronic kidney disease, this will have stages. Okay? Uh, the kidneys usually <clears throat> get worse if the cause of the disorder is not managed, meaning if it's caused by drugs, for instance, the patient doesn't comply with uh, stopping certain medications, they continue taking it, whether they're prescription or illicit drugs, for instance, could also be from a disease condition, let's say diabetes, right? Uh, causes kidney, chronic kidney disease. So if they don't manage diabetes, then that will worsen the condition. <clears throat> uh, so here are problems which we already discussed. So there'll be fluid problems, there'll be electrolyte problems, and also metabolic problems, uh, albumin problems, and these are the stages. Chart 48-1. <clears throat> All the stages are based on GFR. GFR is glomerular filtration rate. Normal is 125 mLs per minute. So this is the rate at which your kidneys will filter your blood, 125 mLs per minute. Stage one, this is now the GFR, stage two, stage three, and stage four. Stage five is also called end-stage kidney disease. Meaning if it's if the GFR is now less than 15, that means is the is the is the 
are the kidneys doing its their jobs? No more. So it's as if you don't have any kidneys at all. So when you're at that stage, ESKD, that means you'll have to go on dialysis. And we have two types of dialysis. We'll discuss that later. Manifestations. So manifestations will be related to, well, what functions are no longer happening, right? So what will happen to the patient's weight again? What happened to the blood pressure? What happens to the red blood cells? Okay, so these are now the manifestations of CKD, okay? Because the kidneys are no longer working. So if you know the functions of the kidneys, they're no longer there. That will be the patient's manifestations. So B and creatinine, because the these are no longer eliminated. So of course this will increase. And when you have high levels of B and creatinine, what will happen to your blood pH? It's going to high or low? pH. <clears throat> Actually lower the pH, become more acidic. Metabolic acidosis. So you have anemia as already described and the patient will have fluid retention, fluid overload. Can this cause heart failure as well? Yes. Okay, so here, the patient will have edema and also heart failure. And there will be some, especially when your potassium is high, that we discussed last week, manifestations of hyperkalemia and then the management of hyperkalemia. Okay. So how, how do we help the patient? They have no functioning kidneys. Now, depending on the stage, if of course the patient has stage one, two, or three, uh, we can still treat the patient. There are no medications to, to treat the kidneys. I mean, it's not like it's, a, it's the heart. It's not an infection, right? This is just kidney failure. Patient, the patient's kidneys uh, were damaged already. So now, can we just treat it symptomatically? So we don't care about the patient's symptoms at all? Screw your hypertension, screw your hyperkalemia, screw your anemia. So is it, are we treating the symptoms? Okay, that's the correct answer, all right. So now the patient will need blood pressure medications, correct? Will they need uh, erythropoietin injections? Yes, will they need to their electrolytes, especially potassium to be monitored and treated? Okay, so either high or low, we have to treat electrolyte imbalances. What about the blood volume? Remember, they have could have edema and heart failure. So what will they receive as well? Diuretics as well. Okay, so those are the... And what about the... Um, what causes um, kidneys to fail? What did we do or ingest? What did we eat? Did we take harmful medications? Yes, so do we continue giving them, especially NSAIDs, for instance? Because NSAIDs are nephrotoxic, do we continue to encourage the patient? Okay, so we avoid nephrotoxic medications. Uh, however, we can't avoid it sometimes, right? Let's say the patient has an infection. So that means antibiotics are nephrotoxic. So does that mean we don't give them antibiotics at all? So no antibiotics? I have an infection. Yes, so we have, but we have to be careful with the, the dosing, right? So it had to be uh, renally dosed. That's the correct term. So renal dosing is not the same as standard dosing now. So we have to dose the antibiotics based on the patient's GFR. That's not our concern. The doctor will have to make those calculations, right? That's not our concern. Of course, it, the rest of these will help. It's stop smoking, lose weight through exercise and diet. Okay, uh, we'll skip through nephrosclerosis. We're not doing that. Let's go now to acute kidney injury. Right here. 
acute, unlike chronic kidney disease, wherein you can only slow it down, correct? So we said avoiding, uh, if you have chronic kidney disease, let's say stage one, two, three, we avoid nephrotoxic substances yeah, and medications as well. We already mentioned, you know, lose weight, stop smoking, right? So pretty much you want to conserve what remaining kidney function you have. Okay. Not so with acute kidney injury. Acute kidney injury is totally treatable. However, if acute kidney injury is not treated, it can progress to CKD. Okay. So let's so the the longer discussion will actually be on AKI because with CKD, that's pretty much all you can do is preserve what remaining kidney function the patient has, which is you you avoid anything harmful to the kidneys. You control your uh, meaning. Do we do we have to restrict the patient's uh, fluid intake? Therefore, if you have CKD, yes. So those are all necessary. But will any of those change the outcome? Not really. Okay, so you're just slowing things down. Okay, I repeat, AKI is different because this one is totally treatable. Okay, so what is AKI? This is a rapid loss of renal function. There are three categories of AKI. So how do we develop AKI? There are three categories. It's a long list. So let's go to the um, uh, categories. Uh, first, uh, phases are mentioned here. Uh, let me just look, go through the <clears throat> rifle classification. Okay. Uh, but this is not your concern. This is the doctor making this classification. So this one, unlike uh, earlier, it was GFR, right, for the stages in CKD. This one is based on creatinine levels. So RIFO is the acronym, so risk, injury, failure, loss, and ESKD. <clears throat> uh, like I said, this is um, based on, uh, this is on acute though. Okay? This is different from chronic, where you had stage 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which is ESKD. And there are phases. For today, we will only talk about the phase two and phase three. Um, there is a phase four uh, recovery, but recovery is a long time though. So we won't do that. So for today, we'll only discuss oligoric and diuretic uh, phases. Okay, let me describe what the oligoric period is. <laughs> what does oligoria mean again? Okay, so that's exactly what happens to the uh, to the patient. The oligoric period is marked by oliguria. Now, if let's say, uh, Elisa, if I beat you up, I'm pretty sure I can take you on. Take I can take you on. Okay, so let's say um, I wait around the corner with a aluminum baseball bat. Okay, or let's say outside the bathroom door. So the moment, and I'm not here. So if the door swings open like this, you won't see me. I'm behind the door right here. So as soon as you let the door go, pow, okay? I'll hit you a few times, bye -bye, and kick you. All right, so will, do you think you can get up and brush yourself off and then go, go home? So you're going to be down a while, right? So it's same thing here. This is acute kidney injury. So the, the whatever, we'll discuss the three categories later of how the kidney got injured. So for this period, the kidneys cannot do its job. So it's just like Elisa down on the ground. So she'll be moaning in pain. And, oh, and doesn't know what's going on. What the hell happened to me? Okay, so it's just the same exact condition here. So during the oligoric period, the patient's kidneys sustained an acute injury <clears throat> and will take a while before it can resume its function. Okay. So here, so there's increase, of course, in the, because the patient's functions, kidney function will stop okay, acutely like this. We were fine earlier. Now it stops, just like what happened to Elisa. So the waste products will accumulate. 
so will the potassium and sodium kidney uh, i mean fluid volume will accumulate blood pressure will rise <clears throat> right this is what's going to happen and of course the um, <clears throat> patient's urine output this is oligoric after all so there will be oliguria so that's how we know the patient is in the oligoric phase on the urine output now how will we know that they have <clears throat> less than 400 ml of urine per day. How did we know this? So how do we how do we ensure we know the patient's hourly urine output? We need a Foley catheter. So this is one of the justifiable rash reasons for why we inserted a catheter on the patient. So a patient is in for AKI, we will have to insert a Foley catheter, okay? Because we need to monitor, are they oligoric or have they entered the next phase? All right, okay. So how long will the oligoric period, meaning how long will they have uremia? You know, this increase your waste products in the blood, the high blood pressure, the uh, high potassium. When will they, and the low urine output, when, how long will they have this? We don't know. Each patient, the, the, the period at which each phase will last, we, we don't know. Could be a few hours for a young person, could be days for a, or even weeks for a um, older person, okay, or uh, whatever the patient's baseline kidney function that will also affect the, the um, how, how long they'll stay in each phase. So during the oligoric period, what do you think we will do for this patient? They're in the oligoric phase. So what will we do with the fluids? Do we give them a lot of fluids or do we restrict the fluids? Okay, we'll restrict the fluids uh, based on their urine output, yeah? Okay, next, what do we do with the blood pressure? And so we'll just measure, that's it. It's high. Okay, that's what we do. We manage the blood pressure. Okay, what, hap what do we do with the electrolytes? We correct them, yeah. If it's too high, then we lower it. If it's too low, we replace, okay? All right, and uh, so we said, uh, manage the fluid, right? Um, next is manage the blood pressure and then regulate the electrolytes. Yeah, remember, these patients' kidneys are not working. Okay. With regards to anemia, now because AKI happened like this, do you think the patient will develop anemia if it's in a matter of hours? Yes or no? No, you won't see anemia in AKI, only in CKD. Because it's not like your red blood cells will drop today because it's the production, right? The production of red blood cells is the one that's affected. Now, are, are you really making that many red blood cells hour by hour enough to affect your... Not really. Okay, so we're not concerned with anemia in AKI. So we are concerned, however, the, what, what do you think it will be the most life threatening here? What will kill this patient first? The potassium levels. Okay, so the hyperkalemia will kill this patient. Okay, not to mention the fluid and the blood pressure as well. Okay, and of course, it may damage the brain because of the creatinine level so high. Okay, so those are our concerns. So we have a Foley, right? So we said we're going to manage blood pressure, regulate or control the electrolytes, and then we're going to restrict the fluids, yeah? If appropriate, can we give the patients diuretics? Remember, can the kidneys, they are oliguric. So if they're oliguric, are they making enough urine? So do they, will they benefit from diuretics? 
the patient is oliguric. They're not making enough urine. Will they benefit from diuretics? Absolutely, yes, yes, they will. Okay. In fact, if you give diuretics, can we facilitate them moving into the next phase, which is now the diuretic phase? Yes. Yes, ma'am? Um, so what happens to fluid volume? What happens to fluid volume? So will diuretics help? Okay. Period. You gave a diuretic, so you're forcing the kidneys to work. All right. So the diuretic period. So how do we know the patient has entered the diuretic phase? So how did we know they were in the oliguric phase? The urine output was low. So how do you know they've entered the diuretic phase? Okay. It just increased or a lot? Of, okay, a lot now. Okay. So if you're, let's say, distracted, because remember again, can we predict how long the patient will be in the oligoric phase? No idea. We have no idea whatsoever. How will we recognize though? The urine output. How will we know the urine output went from low to high? The Foley. Okay, very good. So the diuretic period is marked by gradual increase in urine output, which signals that the GFR is increasing. That means are the kidneys recovering? Yes, they're starting to improve. They have not recovered yet, but they are starting to. Okay. So laboratory value stabilized, meaning the electrolytes creatinine level will be closer to normal now. Okay. Um, they have not fully recovered yet though, but what will be the change in our therapy? Because remember, we restricted fluids during the oligoric phase. We gave antihypertensive medications, right? a lot of them, and we controlled the electrolytes. So what will we do different in the diuretic phase? Let's start with fluids. What will we do now? Now we're going to give fluids because now they're losing more water, right? So we have to replace those, yeah? And same thing with the electrolytes and same thing with the blood pressure, okay? And we still monitor, okay, closely. Um, as soon as the BUN creatinine levels are normal, then we can say, have they, um, are they still in the diuretic phase? And uh, you know, urine output is now normal within normal range. Are they they're still in the diuretic phase or have they entered the recovery, recovery phase now? So you keep the patient alive between make sure they go from the oligoric to the diuretic phase. Because if the patient enters the diuretic phase and they experience another injury and they return to the oligoric phase there's no chance of recovery. Patient must go oligoric, diuretic, recovery. If they go oligoric, diuretic, oligoric again, CKD will follow. No chance of recovery. They cannot go down. So meaning Elisa, as soon as she got up, you know, brushed herself up, you know, uh, recovered, you know, ate, drank, you know, ah, she feels good. And that beat her back again. Will they, she ever recover? No, she will. She'll die, yes. If they suffer, yes, exactly. So let's say you were the nurse, oligoric phase. Remember, what did what therapy did we do here? Fluid restriction, right? And then here, if you continue the fluid restriction, did not do fluid replacement, what will happen? You injure the kidney a second time. So now there's no chance of recovery now. Patient will be in. CKD forever. Are we clear? All right, so that's the long story. Again, recovery, we have no idea how long. This could be weeks, could be months. Okay? Or again, if the patient really has bad kidneys, could be years. Okay, let's go now to the how did we end up in the first place? How will you develop AKI? As I mentioned earlier, it's a long list. We categorize them into three. We have pre-renal, intra-renal, and post-renal. What do these mean? 
When we say pre-renal AKI, this is caused by decreased blood flow to the kidneys. I repeat, pre-renal AKI is any condition that will result in low blood flow to the kidneys. What can do that? Number one, dehydration, blood loss, or from too much diuretics, okay? including osmotic diuretics. We'll discuss this in uh, DKA next week under diabetes. Decreased cardiac output. We just concluded heart failure. So acute heart failure and pause. Pre-renal AKI. Shock. I know this says cardiogenic shock, but any shock will cause pre-renal AKI. Heart failure and MI. Um, by the way, when the patient is in shock, regardless of the type of shock, the patient's troponin level might increase. I repeat, if the patient is in shock, septic shock, hypovolemic shock, the patient's troponin level might increase. What is troponin? Indication of a heart attack, yeah? Okay. So if the patient's troponin levels are elevated because of these conditions, it's not necessarily a heart attack. It just means that, yes, there was injury to the myocardium because of decreased blood pressure, decreased perfusion to the myocardium. Will that cause death of myocardial cells? Absolutely, okay, but doesn't mean they had a heart attack. Because remember, a heart attack is caused by a blockage of one or more coronary arteries, yeah? So don't be surprised, okay? So there might be troponin elevation, but doesn't mean it's a heart attack. Are we clear? Right. So what other other conditions? So will these also drop blood pressure? Yes, so any condition that decreases low blood flow to the kidneys, whether it's loss of blood volume or loss of blood pressure. Any question on pre-renal AKI? So if I put this on a select all and apply question, or let's say we're teaching you now next gen question. So uh, I can't do much next gen on um, Canvas, but I'll try. So if we have drag and drop, can you put them in order? So let's say I put this on a test question. I have three columns. So I put these causes here as the choices. And the, the instruction is to drag these causes under pre-renal, intra-renal, or post-renal. All right. That's how you answer. Okay. So let's go to intra-renal. So what are these conditions? Any condition that will damage the kidney tissue itself. Examples, transfusion reactions, especially hemolytic anemia, okay, rhabdomyolysis. So any toxins, okay, anything that will harm the kidneys. So it could be myoglobin from rhabdomyolysis, uh, pigment neuropathy, or remnants of destroyed red blood cells. Okay, so anything harmful, let's say antibiotics are also here, the okay, nephrotoxic agents, uh, contrast agents, yeah, IV, IV contrast agents, those are harmful. Okay, medications for diabetes, for antibiotics, for instance, anything harmful to the kidneys that will cause intrarenal AKI. Let's say you ingested bleach, for instance. Okay, so let's say you listen to uh, to the former president, right, to treat COVID. Okay, you ingest, drink bleach, ah, you did that. So that will damage your kidneys, yeah? Okay. Or infections, like here, acute pyelonephritis. That's an acute infection of the kidneys. We'll talk about it later in uh, module nine. Okay, so any questions on intrarenal? Okay, uh, post-renal. Post-renal is, of course, obviously not pre-renal, not intrarenal. Post-renal is any obstruction, anything that will prevent urine from coming out of your body. And as a result, urine will back up into your kidneys, drowning it, poisoning your kidneys, causing AKI. So what could obstruct blood flow? Could be blood clots, could be stones, could be uh, a mechanical blockage, let's say there's a tumor in your prostate, tumor in your bladder, 
or let's say you have strictures, okay? Meaning your urethra, for instance, you know, is is uh, the walls of your urethra adhered, okay? Those are adhesions or strictures, for instance, okay? Uh, I had that uh, as a, you know, when I was nine years old. I can't remember, I can't forget that experience. It was traumatic. Couldn't pee for an entire day. I was finally brought to the ER. So since I woke up, right, meaning that was my urine from last night, from before midnight, before I went to bed, and they didn't relieve the urine obstruction until it was already like 4 or 5 p.m. the next day. It was miserable, nine years old, and it was summer. Supposed to be out having a good time, right? Won't tell you what they did. It's traumatic though. Or what they had to do. So any questions on the three? Pre-renal, intra-renal, post-renal. No? Okay. All right. Manifestations. Uh, of course, these are all the manifestations we talked about in CKD, but they happen like this. Okay, so same thing. So we have, again, depending on which phase. So oligoric phase, of course, we're talking fluid volume overload, yeah? And then in uh, oligoric, I mean, diuretic phase, of course, fluid volume deficit. Of course, the treatment, though, would be depending on what category is the patient's AKI in. For instance, if it's pre-renal, what do you think the therapy will be? knowing these are the causes. Fluids, very good. Okay. What about if it's intrarenal? What do you think will be the treatment? Antidotes, if there are any antidotes, yeah. Okay, so what, what do you do? Can we give fluids also? No, to flush out these, um, yeah, we can give fluids too. Or let's say, like I said, Antidotes, let's say heavy metals, okay? So patient may be given antidotes. We call the poison control, okay? Are there any, or for IV contrast, we could give acetylcysteine or, and again, fluids as well, all right? Uh, so it depends. So let's say if it's uh, an infection, we give antibiotics, right? So it's specific to the cause, okay, for AKI. So it depends. If it's pre-renal, mostly fluids, yeah? But if it's intra-renal, Different story, maybe fluids, but also specific to what exactly caused the intrarenal. Or in post-renal, what do you think will be the treatment? Will it be fluids or surgical interventions? Yes, could be surgical or non-surgical interventions Yeah, to relieve the obstruction. Does that make sense? Okay. And then you, you deal with the AKI itself, uh, of course, depending on well, what phase is the patient in now. Okay, are we still oligoric or are we now in the diuretic phase? So manifestations, as already mentioned, nothing different from CKD. Same problems. However, they just, what was the onset? Was it slow and gradual or is this like quick? This is fast. Okay? Meaning you could be fine at one o'clock. 2 p.m., you're already in AKI, right? That's that fast. Yeah, usually the, well, in hospitalized patients, when the AKI happens, it's usually in surgery. Let's say the patient underwent surgery, right? And then they sustained blood loss. Let's say, you know, the doctor had... Uh, accidentally nicked uh, an artery, you know, caused massive bleeding. They could have AKI right there in the operating room table. They were post op, they're already in uh, oligoric phase, okay? and then uh, so on. It could be that fast. Uh, at at home, uh, usually, uh, if let's say a patient is old in a nursing home, and their most co most um, common diagnosis when they come in is, let's say, what's the most frequent infection in a long-term care facility? UTI and pneumonia, right? Or infected pressure injury, right? So that causes sepsis. And when they come in septic, you know, septic shock, blood pressure is already low, they're already in 
AKI. Meaning, we're not, most patients, we're not dealing with one problem. Meaning, patients admitted for sepsis, right? So here, let's go back to the uh, categories. So let's say the patient is here for shock. Here, sepsis. Okay, so sepsis causes septic shock, yeah? That means, yes, we're dealing with sepsis, we're treating the sepsis, but they're also in AKI at the same time, right? So it gets complicated uh, as a result, all right? So that will affect patient's mortality. Does that make sense? And we'll talk about the same thing. So when next week, when you talk about DKA, hyperglycemic complications of diabetes, that will cause AKI because that's fluid loss, yeah? Patient will have massive, you know, osmotic diuresis that will cause what type of AKI, pre, intra, or post? No, we're peeing a lot, like, like diabetes insipidus. You're peeing massive amounts. So what type of AKI will you develop? Pre, intra, or post renal? Pre renal. Okay. So that chapter we talk about DKA next week won't mention AKI anymore because we we discuss AKI in this chapter. Does that make sense? So I won't repeat uh, AKI next week, right? But just know, uh, let's say from even from last week, diabetes insipidus, since the patient pees about thirty to forty liters per per day, can that cause AKI? Which, which type, pre, intra, or post? Pre, renal again, all right? Make sense, is that, okay. So remember last week when we discussed diabetes insipidus, we did not mention AKI, but can that happen? Yes, that can happen under pre, renal AKI. So prevention, of course, we know elderly are most common. So if you look at the same chart right here, chart 48-4. So who will you monitor or how can you prevent AKI? Treat the following conditions. So prevent hemorrhage in the first place, give fluids, right? So treat the, when you have vomiting, of course you stop the vomiting, yeah? Then the diarrhea, okay? you, you treat the underlying condition. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's how you prevent. So you have a chart for that. Here are suggestions, especially in the elderly. So you always watch kidney function whenever your patient has. Uh, what about patients who are not eating? Say you have a patient who's um, lethargic just after a stroke, for instance. Or let's say failure to thrive. Patient just gave up. Yeah? All elderly, 90, 99 years old. I don't want to eat anymore. Or let's say he has... Dementia, stage four, those people don't eat anymore because they have what's called uh, anomia. Okay? I mean, they don't know what to do. You, you give them food, they don't know what that is. So how will they know what to do with it? They don't know if that's food or not. Okay? So that's happening in stage four dementia. So of course, will they eat? So you will wonder, why did they stop eating? They don't know what it is. They don't know what to do with it. So... They stop eating. Then we put them, you know, with the feeding tube. Yeah, so again, the, do you know if you have dementia or not? <laughs> so what I'm saying, I'm trying to promote the idea is have a advanced directive. What a living will? What do you want to be done to you? Okay, do you want feeding tubes? Just FYI, when we have, when we put, once we put a feeding tube in you, you can live forever. But that's all we can do though. Can't fix your head. You have dementia, that's it. That, that's what you have. You can't recognize family, right? But we'll keep you alive. You have put a feeding tube, you can live indefinitely. You can outlive your kids you and outlive your neighbors, your, your spouse, all right? Just FYI. But again, quality of life is different now. Your, your body is there, but your mind is not.
Okay, where are we now? Okay, so management, uh, this AKI, again, we, um, always the diagnosis is essential. What caused the AKI? Is it pre-renal, intra-renal, and post-renal? Treat that. And meanwhile, we treat the symptoms, whether or not they're in the, uh, what phase they're at. They're oliguric or diuretic phase. And then if the patient does require, meaning we can't manage the blood pressure, the electrolyte abnormalities um, enough with the interventions, you know, fluid restriction, all that, then we'll have to do dialysis. We don't have time today, so we'll talk about dialysis, uh, types of dialysis next week. As far as hyperkalemia, which is the most life-threatening complication of AKI and CKD, we already discussed last week. So let's review what are the four ways you can eliminate, I mean, you can reduce potassium. Diuretics, what else? You said, go ahead, SPS. And what is the newer SPS? Start with a P. Pathiromir, right? <clears throat> and then how else? What drugs can you give? Calcium gluconate and sodium bicarb. And what's the last one? No, last two. Regular insulin with dextrose and... Albuterol, yeah? Okay. Okay, so we won't repeat that. We already discussed that extensively last week, so it's repeated here. Okay, so these are your... Um, oh, don't forget cardiac monitoring. Okay, very important. Uh, nutritional therapy, this will be discussed also next week under dialysis, meaning we'll have to control everything now, yeah? So can we give you burgers, pizza? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have... The dietitian has to prescribe the amounts of protein, sodium, potassium, calcium, uh, and even the calories, okay? How much you're allowed each meal. All right, that's it. So quiz 